Hello, hello. It is Sarah Waggle, astrologer and leadership coach here for this Leo season, sun and rising signs. Okay, let's all take a deep breath. Put your feet flat on the ground if you can. Settle ourselves into our body. Settle ourselves into the earth. Things are a little wild. Things are a little crazy. Um, I want to define a couple of things that may be coming up or that you may be hearing about, that you're confused about, um, those sorts of things. I know I've got a lot of people on my YouTube that are not as familiar with astrology or spiritual work um, as I am. And so I appreciate you being here. Let's talk about a couple of things. What is a timeline shift and why is everybody talking about it? Maybe you're not hearing about it, but I am. Um, so a timeline shift means that we are increasing our frequency. I talk about frequency with regard to emotions because there is the Hertz, H-E-R-T-Z scale of emotion. Um, and as we rise in our frequency of emotion, meaning we are able to not only feel the anger and the grief and the guilt and the shame, but we're also able to tune into contentment and joy and love and enlightenment, our, our, as we heal those wounds that are kind of holding us back from living a content life or a joyful life, as we heal, whether that is choosing a sobriety journey or you're choosing therapy or you're choosing to work with a spiritual um, support person or a life coach or something like that, we're healing, right? And when we heal, then we experience life differently. And so um, as more people are healing and moving through those lower frequency emotions, we're now starting to experience higher frequency emotions. So the frequency on our planet is shifting because we are shifting. It also has a lot to do with the planets in motion and solar flares and things like that. And so while uh, with all this solar energy, we've had a lot of um, X-class solar flares, uh, M-class solar flares, uh, highly recommend the suspicious observer. He knows way more about this stuff than I do. Um, but we have had a lot of major solar energy. That means the sun is flooding light onto our planet. And the more light that's flooded onto our planet the more we are revealing shadows, not only with ourselves, but within, um, you know, different parts of our collective and different parts of our planet. So timeline shifts are when we move from one parallel timeline to another. So that means that uh, you may go into a room and you see your coffee cup sitting on the counter next to your microwave, but in another timeline, you didn't set it next to your microwave because you know you'd have flung open the microwave door and flung the coffee cup off of the counter. So you put it in a more responsible place, right? Maybe you put it on the counter next to the sink um, or something like that. Or maybe in one timeline, you used clear glassware, but in another timeline, you're like, oh, I can't see clear glassware on my counter. So I'm going to, in this timeline, invest in colored glassware or uh, something like that. Okay, maybe you in one timeline um, purchased a twin size bed, but in another timeline, you bought a queen size bed because you're like, I want more room. So anywho, that's what timeline shifting is, is when you notice changes in your environment that you don't recollect doing or choosing, but they are there. I've heard of people like finding, you know, things just misplaced or place of like, why, what, what, why do not remember putting that there? Um, maybe you're noticing just who you are around is shifting. You're shifting to being around people who are of a higher vibration or a higher frequency. So you're bringing in more of those people and the people who have that lower vibration or just, 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 just disappearing, or you're just noticing that like they don't show up on your social media feed um, or something like that. And so that's what a timeline shift is. We have been bouncing around in them for the last week or so. We're going to continue to, as this Leo season unfolds, 
Um, no one's going to make it through this Leo season without some kind of change. That's that simple. It's that simple. We have a lot going on. We have Chiron stationing retrograde uh, on, I believe, the 26th of July. We have Mercury stationing retrograde on August 4th to add to the fun. And uh, so, yeah, so we, we've got a lot of things that are sort of um, cleansing or clearing or coming to conclusion um, and a lot of things that are just sort of ending, dropping off or, uh, you know, whatnot. Also, this means that people will also continue to leave our planet. Um, and so case in point, we've seen a lot of celebrities leave our planet recently. Those souls mission is complete in their human form. Um, many of them are going to complete their mission in the, the ethers, in the cosmos, um, and are there to support us on our continued mission as humans. Um, many of them will reincarnate, uh, if you believe in that. I do, so I'm going to speak like that. Um, many of them will reincarnate because they need to be a part of the next level of the process. They've graduated from this level, so they need to go and be reincarnated so they can come back and help with the next part, um, you know, the next generation. Um, and so things like that are occurring. Um, and so it, it's very confusing. It feels like, what the fuck? It feels like we're in a whirlwind. Um, it feels like a lot of things are crumbling. A lot of things are crumbling that, that Capricorn full moon, um, and Pluto returning to 29 degrees Capricorn that won't be till Virgo season. Um, but things like that Chiron stations retrograde in July. However, during Leo season, however, he will be retrograde until the end of December where he will station direct at 19 degrees uh, where we had that 19 degrees of Aries, where we had that solar eclipse in April. So there's a lot going on here. A lot of things unfinished. A lot of things we're not done with. The Mars-Uranus conjunction that occurred or perfected on July 15th. We actually saw the events of that on July 13th. And uh, we will continue to see that because Mercury, as he is moving forward, will square Mar or square Uranus once, go retrograde and square Uranus again, and go forward and square Uranus again. So we will continue to hear maybe true, maybe not true information about what happened on July 13th. Um, and that's where we kind of have to be super aware and use our Leo courage and Leo strength to make good discernments and good, you know, uh, good choices based on the highest level we can. And so, um, you know, this Leo season is really going to show the courage uh, that each of us has to speak the truth, to speak into what, you know, what we know for real. Um, you know, it was Jupiter and Gemini in 2012 when I had my first sort of awakening or awareness experience that, you know, the society, the way it was going was not sustainable. Um, and so here we are in the 2020, middle of the 2020s decade, and we're moving through it. So let's get into this Leo season. Um, you know, again, this is going to be one of those Leo seasons that's going to, if you're not prepared, and, and I say a lot of what I say for you to prepare you know things are going to change in your world. You probably already sense that they are changing. Maybe you already are moving or planning to move. Maybe you already are planning to switch jobs. Um, but also note that with Mercury and retrograde, things that happen now as he is in his shadow until August 4th when he stations retrograde um, may repeat, right? That's how Mercury works. Um, and so, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the new moon in Leo chart and the full moon in Aquarius chart. Unfortunately, this new moon does not, not occur until August 4th, um, and then the full moon will be on August 19th. Um, and there seems like a long time between now and then, but obviously tune into the Moon Astrology Tarot videos where I will dive deep into transits as they occur. Um, and I will also go over your sun and rising signs for this Leo season. So let's get into it. Okay, so we got the slides up. Um, this is the new moon that's going to peak on August 4th. Let me get up there. 
August 4th, that's a Sunday. It's going to peak at 6 12 a.m. Central Daylight Time. And if we look down here, I'm on an Aries rising chart um, just to simplify things. Um, but you can see where I've highlighted it in yellow down at the lower right hand corner. Um, it's peaking at 12 degrees of Leo. Um, we've got Mercury at four degrees of Virgo. He's going to station retrograde within a day of the new moon. Um, and so, you know, this is going to be one of those new moons, like be bold, be courageous. This is the Jupiter decan of Leo. Um, it's the middle decan, um, the middle 10 degrees of Leo, um, you know, we're just in kind of this time and space where, you know, putting your, the courageous lion, um, big girl, big, big boy pants on, speak the truth, speak what you're really feeling. If you don't like how people treat you, tell them. If you don't like how your community is, fix it, do something about it. Um, you know, disconnect from a group or community that's not serving you and go where you belong, not where you have to shift yourself to fit in. Um, now do this from an empowered place. Don't be a jackass and, <laughs> and, and just be like, well, they don't help me. Like I want to be helped, but like, you're not willing to ask for help. Right. Um, or, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't go from a disempowered entitlement perspective, but like from a empowered, I've asked, I've tried, I've tried explaining that their words hurt. I've tried explaining that I need assistance with this, that, or the other thing, and they don't seem to understand it. Um, you know, but there are people out there. And as we continue to spread light, grid light, be light towards each other, um, you know, we're going to attract more people that are willing to help. However, if you are not doing your own healing work and you are just demanding or whatever, um, you know, you might find that this is challenging uh, to work through. Because there's a difference between being empowered and requesting and asking versus being demanding and entitled and just assuming that because you need it, people are going to offer it. Um, and so I, I feel like there's a distinction there and a difference there and probably is going to surface, especially with a Mercury retrograde that's going to crisscross with um Uranus multiple times. Um, there may be some lessons involved for some people around how they communicate with others or how they don't communicate. Are you vague with your words or are you, you know, direct with your words? I'm pretty direct and that also gets me in trouble because people think I'm bitchy and I'm not. I'm just, I'm just firm with my words. Um, but uh, so this chart, you know, there's not a lot going on in this particular moment. Um, however, we do have things building and we'll see that in the next chart, you know, that we have Mars, um, going to conjunct, uh, Jupiter, you can see in the lower left-hand corner, um, and that we have, um, Chiron, the green key looking, um, glyph, his number has turned red, um, indicative of his retrograde that starts on the 26th. And then, of course, we have Saturn and Neptune in retrograde and Pluto in retrograde. So um, now, as I stated, you know, back when we were in cancer season or maybe it was Gemini season, as we move through this other half of the year, all of these planets that are in Aquarius, Pisces, Aries and Taurus and now Gemini the, the, the personal planets, Mars, Venus, and Mercury, and the sun, as they move through this latter half of the Zodiac, will start aspecting, right? We're seeing the tension between the planets. We're seeing the harmon the harmonious acts, acts between the planets. We'll see oppositions, which create a push-pull effect, um, and so that's where we are. So this is where the work really kicks in. And of course, the outer planets are now mostly all in retrograde, um, adding to the mix of the tension and the slowdown and the push pull and all of that. And so it really is up to you and your healing and your clearing karma and your cleansing your space, your, your mind, your, um, emotions and all of the things in order to, um, you know, 
capitalize on these transits. So that's the new moon. Take a good look at that one. That's a pretty, pretty, pretty tame, pretty easy chart. Now let's move on to the full moon in Aquarius. This full moon is not only the moon opposite the sun. So you can see the sun down in Leo in the lower right hand corner and the moon in the top left hand corner in Aquarius. Um, and then you can see the um, T square. So that's an opposition. Then both of those, the moon and the sun are creating a triangle shape uh, with Uranus in Taurus. We just had some activity with Uranus in Taurus with Mars. We're going to continue to have it with um, uh, Mercury in Leo creating a square with Uranus. And then this full moon is going to create what's called a T square. So if you have planets or placements in the fixed signs, so around 25, 26, 27, 28 degrees of, of uh, Taurus, of Leo, of Scorpio, of Aquarius, you might see some interesting happenings with those areas of your chart. Um, concurrently, we have a T-square, so the same triangular shape and opposition um, between Saturn in Pisces here on the left. If we go across the chart, we have Venus at 18 degrees of Virgo. So within a degree of Saturn. And then if we look down here, we have Jupiter at the bottom left hand um, of the chart, Jupiter at 17 degrees of Gemini. Now, this is a mutable T-square, okay? Meaning change. So if you are a Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces rising, you may experience some interesting change happening in your chart, in your life. Um, however, this T-square, even though it's mutable and you may not be a mutable rising, let's just say you're a um, Leo rising, you're obviously going to experience some change during this Leo season. Let's say you're a Scorpio rising or a Sagittarius rising. Um, you will also experience change, but the cardinal signs, y'all ain't off the hook. Aries, Cancer, uh, Libra, and Cap <clears throat> Capricorn, excuse me. You're not off the hook because if you happen to be, let's just say a Libra rising, but you have a lot of planets or points in um, any of the other signs like Aquarius, like Pisces, like Cancer, or excuse me, like Gemini, like Taurus, like Scorpio, you could also experience change. So none of us is out of the woods on this one. None of us is, is kind of, uh, you know, not going to, none of us is going to get away without experiencing some level of change. These are some nasty T squares. They're going to be tense. They're going to upset things. They're going to change things. But here's the thing. I don't want you to fear this. Okay. I don't want you to fear this. If you're hearing sirens, I'm sorry. I have my windows open today and I'm blessed to have my windows open today. Um, here's what I want you to bear in mind as you know, we present with squares. Yes, they're tension, but squares are also lessons. It's, are you willing to be adaptable, flexible, um, um, courageous to be okay with not knowing what the fuck is going on in this world or even in your own world, not knowing how it's going to go. That's a fire truck. So let's say a little prayer that everybody's okay. Um, I don't even know if you guys can hear the stuff outside. So I'm sorry if you're like, what the hell is she talking about? <laughs> um, but anywho, squares are tense, but they're meant to, you know, slow us down and have us really process through things. All of us is going to experience change in, in Leo season between July 21st and August 22nd. And it's just a matter of, are you okay to just let go and let the roller coaster ride go? I think back to, um, you know, I've been on several roller coasters, but it's been a long time because I think I'm too old for it. <laughs> I can't handle it as much. But um, 
So when I was young, I went to St. Louis, uh, 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 Six Flags St. Louis, and I rode the Screaming Eagle. And the Screaming Eagle is one of those rides that only has the lap, uh, the lap um, cover. And I thought the Screaming Eagle was so much fun. Then I was like in my 30s and I went to Six Flags Great America and I rode the Raging Bull, which if you've ever been on the Raging Bull, it goes up really, 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 really high. And then it comes around the corner and it literally just drops and I couldn't even see the freaking bottom. And all I had was this lap thing. I was terrified, right? I was terrified. Um... And then I went on the Superman and it had the full body uh, cover and that one, I was fine. I, I thought that was fine. So I had the full body armor and I felt more protected and safer and all of those things. But the thing is, is that, are you willing to just let the ride be a ride? I know it's scary and we're all anxious and we're all feeling some level of stress and worry. And I really invite you to take advantage of meditation, even if it is, um, it's called, um, I'm going to butcher it, Vipassana um, or Vipassana. I don't know. I can't remember how to say it correctly, nor do I remember how to spell it correctly, but it's silent meditation. Are you willing to sit on the ground and be in silence for 10 minutes, don't touch your phone, don't touch your computer, don't touch your iPad, turn off the podcast, turn off the freaking TV, turn off all the things and be silent for 10 minutes. Are you willing to take a walk without your devices, without your podcast on, without your music on? Are you willing to cook, cook, do your house chores, um, do the dishes without your music on? without a movie on, without a, 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 a book on, you know, that sort of thing. Be very selective with what you're consuming in your ears, in your food, in your beverage, what you see, all of the things. Disconnect from social media if you have to. And people can say like, well, I disconnected from social media. But if you have to have some kind of something on all the time, whether it's an audio book, a podcast, music, uh, 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 the news, all of the things. If you have to have something on all the time, it's the same thing as surfing social media all damn day. Okay. You've got to think about the things that are going to help you calm yourself down, calm your nervous system down, you know, connecting with earth, getting outside, walking in the grass, barefoot, taking a walk outside in the fresh air, period. You know interacting and engaging with real people, right? Going places and being a part of, of, it, of, of groups and communities where you belong, not where you have to adjust to fit in. So there's a lot going on here. Let's get into the sun and rising signs and see if we can sort some of this out. Of course, you can watch my moon astrology tarot videos. Um, to get more up to date and from, I'm trying to keep up with the timeline shifts. I'm trying to keep up with all the things. The good news is, is even when I film them, you know, two weeks out, I seem to be, still be nailing everything, but now I feel like there's been too many timeline shifts. So I got to reset, um, and regroup so I can get ahead again. Um, but anyway, so let's get into the sunrise. Oh, and of course the moon astrology tarot videos, this video will be linked on all of the, the videos for the, for the Leo season duration of Leo season. So you'll be able to reference it, um, whenever you need to, you can of course work with me. If you want to know your sun, your moon, your rising sign, highly recommend it for this particular stretch of time. Just know you're knowing your sun, your moon, your rising will be super helpful in getting through this stretch of time. You don't have to know anything else about your chart. Just tell me, you know, if you, if you're booking with me, just tell me, Sarah, I don't want to know anything else. I just want to know my sun, moon, my rising. Um, because I feel like that'll be really helpful to get you through this time. My booking link is below, or you can contact me directly if you have access to that information. Um, buy me a coffee. If you want to support this channel, um, you can also join the Awakening Spirit Collective. I'm going to be doing some more in-depth videos over there um, to kind of support people through, you know, whatever process we're going through with these timelines um, and whatnot. So you can join the Awakening Spirit Collective. Um, the link below is an affiliate link. I do get a percentage when you join. 
Um, what else? The 2024 practical tools video is below. I did go back and rewatch it. I still think it's accurate. Um, I think it's a matter of putting into practice. If you're questioning what you should be doing right now, or what, could, what you could be doing to help yourself right now, are you putting into practice the different things that you've learned from me or any other astrologer or spiritual teacher that you work with? You know, you really got to consciously and intentionally put into practice these things. Um, okay, I think that's it. Let's shift into the sun and rising signs and get you guys through this Leo season. This video is going to be long, but that's okay. I'll timestamp it. You'll be fine. <laughs> All right, Aries, this is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, Leo is your fifth house. Aquarius is your 11th house. Um, and then the mutable, we're going with an immutable square um, from Gemini, your third house, to Pisces, your 12th house. Um, I, In some ways, Aries could be really frustrated because they kind of need to be leader um, and, you know, really discern, uh, what group they want to lead. Um, but they could also want to be like really selfish and self-absorbed. Um, but they may be being called forth to do or be, uh, uh, um, to be more to a group than they want to be. And so maybe it's kind of an opportunity to really like, you know, see where you can be a leader and see where maybe you don't want to be a leader. Um, and then in the Zodiac tarot, you got the five of pentacles in reverse, which, uh, is, is indicative of you wanting to feel good. You, you wanting to find your happy place. Um, and then in the, um, angels and ancestors, we got the Druid, which is holding the space. And so you may be, the person that's being asked to hold space for other people, which you may or may not want to do. So it's kind of a, a sticky situation. Um, I feel like the new moon in your fifth house is really going to open you up and the full moon in your 11th house um, on the 19th um, is going to really uh, like make you want to um, feel through what groups and communities you're a part of, what groups you're a leader of, um, and what skill set you can bring to that. And maybe the skill set that you've been bringing this whole time, you know, you still have that North node moving through your sign, moving through your signs. So, but Chiron going retrograde, um, it also in your sign, um, there could be some just tension around, am I sure I'm with the right people? Am I sure I'm in the right, um, circumstances that's going to allow me the space to be myself and yet be the leader that I need to be for this group. So I got for Aries, Taurus, and Sun, and Rising. Um, this is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Uh, the Leo is your fourth house. Aquarius is your 10th house. So obviously there's going to be some stuff going on with your home life, your career life. Um, and then the square is going to be your second house and your uh, 11th house. So shifts in your, you know, your self-worth, how you value yourself and therefore the people that you are chilling around, that you're hanging around. Um, and I, I, you know, I feel like this is really good for Taurus. You've had Uranus moving through for a very long time. Um, and you had that Mars Uranus uh, conjunction in your first house. Um, and so just around yourself. So you may have already seen like some major shifts within yourself and your appearance and your life. Um, that's now going to trickle into affecting your home, your family, your emotions and your career, um, public appearance, things like that. And then with the square between Gemini and Pisces, um, your self-worth and your groups and communities and who you're hanging around. Um, and so I love this for Taurus. I think this is a really good one for Taurus. Taurus has been making some moves. They've been obviously moving through, um, some stuff. <laughs> and so, you know, transformation for sure is on the way for Taurus and you got the, um, six of wands upright. This person looks like they're on a unicorn. Maybe it is a unicorn. I don't know. Um, but this is all about celebrations, 
knowing your worth. Um, and then in the ancestors, angels and ancestors, you got the traveler moving in a new direction. Um, and definitely, I think Tauruses are ready. They've been overdue ready uh, for a new a new path, a new journey, a new something opening up. Um, I happen to know a couple of Taurus Risings who have had some significant game changer, amazing shit happen in their life in the past couple of weeks. Um, and so hopefully you're one of those Taurus Risings that's had that happen, you know, things, good things happening for you too. Um, so I love this for Taurus. I, I Taurus Rising is I, I just, yeah, I've done some work and it's now starting to pay off. It doesn't mean that there won't be um, tension along the way with a bunch of Mer with Mercury retrograde, mostly in your fourth house. Um, you know, there's going to be some kind of like, you know, questions and, and still some kickbacks and things like that. Um, but I honestly feel like Tauruses are about to really catapult in a whole new direction. You're going to feel good. You're going to love it. So stay the course, stay the journey and super excited to see what Tauruses uh, move to next. Gemini, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, this could be a tough one for Gemini because A, a you're going to have Mars in your first house with Jupiter. Um, so you could be running like 90 miles an hour, but uh, Leo is your uh, third house. Aquarius is your ninth house. Um, it's And with Mercury going retrograde uh, through your third house, um, it, this could be a challenging time for you, like communication wise, education wise, um, you know, maybe you're about to go to college or back to college or something like that. And like, this could be either sending it off in a positive direction or making it compromisingly difficult. Um, you know, you did get the 10 of cups in reverse, which is kind of, you know, struggling for, um, satisfaction, struggling for happiness. Um, but I think it's just because your brain's going 90 miles an hour with Jupiter present in your first house. Um, so, and Uranus in your 12th house is kind of, you know, still, you know, wreaking havoc there. Um, and then in the um, angels and ancestors, you got the drum. This could be good. I feel like this could be good because this could mean like doing some sound therapy or like drum beating therapy uh, that could be really beneficial to really like move some energy and clear some energy uh, as, as Mercury, especially as Mercury goes retrograde in your third house in Leo. Um, you know, there's like that opportunity to really just keep moving the energy through. Um, Geminis tend to be a little all over the map anyway, um, because they're, you know, kind of head in the clouds ish. Um, and I don't mean that as a criticism, it's just the consequence of an air sign. Um, but I think, you know, grounding yourself and really, you know, getting yourself into, you know, um, the reverb, what's the, is it the reverb? when you drum and like the verb, the, the vibration, like vibrates through your body, your nervous system that could actually create some calm for you that could move some energy through, um, because this could potentially be a very tense time for some Gemini's out there. So, um, hang tight. Um, but yeah, take responsibility here, Gemini, and, and really like do some, some, some work, um, around keeping your, keeping the energy moving through your body, even that if it's like the sound cancellation headphones with like drumming on, um, binaural beats or something like that. Um, you know, if you don't have access to a drum that you can actually hold, I'm thinking of like, is that a bongo drum where you like hold it in one hand and, and hit it with the other, um, kind of thing. And then you would have like that vibration moving through your body. Um, so yeah, that's what I got for Gemini. Cancer, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Leo season, 2024. Um, Leo is your second house. Aquarius is your eighth house. This is about your self-worth within yourself and what you value and other people. Um, so, you know, with Mercury going retrograde and things squaring from Leo, your second house to Uranus, uh, which would be your 11th house. Um, and then we have the square between your 12th house and your ninth house. You, I feel like cancers could feel a bit, bit vulnerable 
um, and maybe like a little insecure. And it's kind of one of those, like, you know, getting secure with yourself with that Leo second house. I mean, that's a lot of, of, of opportunity to really feel secure, feel courageous within yourself so that you can, um, you know, connect with your higher self, connect with your mission, um, connect with, um, other people in a more vulnerable way to really like maybe even allow um, other people into your sphere. Um, and you got the four of swords in reverse. Um, you know, normally I'd look at this card and things like safety and security that protected by the swords, but this is in reverse. So I do feel like there's some vulnerability happening, um, opening up, maybe you're kind of lessening your, um, crab, like, uh, uh, uh what, what does a crab do? Like, I want to say snatches. Um, but, and actually like letting your guard down a little bit, maybe it's, it's being more nurturing, but also just that vulnerability of like, sharing how you're actually feeling about some shit. Um, and then you got the white witch, which is be the light. Um, and I think that's what this is. Like we need some cancers to, um, step up, you know, to, to, to be the nurturer, to be the, you know, especially cancerian women, um, but even cancerian men, like stepping into like nurturing from a masculine um, perspective from a masculine role of being the nurturer. Um, I feel like this could be really frustrating for cancers to move through, um, with everything happening in your first house or with your second house and your 12th house. Plus you're still experiencing potential T squares from the nodes in Aries Libra. Um, so I feel like this could be a really frustrating time for cancers to move through. So be gentle with yourself. You know, don't forget to care for yourself um, while you are nurturing those around you. So that's what I got for cancer. Leo, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Okay, this is going to be really a huge test for some Leo risings, but because Leo is your first house, that means that Aquarius is your seventh house groups community, um, seventh house, which is about partnerships, Aquarius, which is about groups, communities. And I talked about groups, communities, where do you belong? Not where you have to adjust to fit in, where you have to compromise yourself to fit in, but also you have this, um, square with Pisces being your eighth house where Saturn and Neptune are and, uh, Gemini, um, which would be your 11th house again, groups, communities. <laughs> so some shit's coming up for Leo's in making choices, having the courage, the courage of, or the, um, strength upright, the strength to make choices that will get you to the group and community that you belong that you feel like you can be welcome to do your spiritual practices, be welcome to um, share your money, share your resources. Doesn't have to be money. It can be resources, your knowledge, your gifts. And the reason I say that is because you got the high priestess, which is in, of, of, of harnessing the power of your gifts, harnessing your power, Leo's. Leo's this is your time. This is your time. You're really going to have to ball up, step up to the plate to make some courageous choices. And I know a few Leo risings who are hearing me right now. <laughs> um, but this is really an opportunity for Leos to make some adjustments. Um, they're going to have to make some really tough decisions and really tough choices to be courageous enough, strong enough to separate themselves from where they thought or who they thought they needed to be around with, who can support them in harnessing um, their abilities, harnessing their gifts, harnessing their talents, um, and really stepping into a whole new role. That is a lot of Leo and Aquarius energy to work with. Um and it's, it's, things are going to change. You, you get, there's no way around it, Leo. This is this Leo season's going to change you. Um, and for the best, I guarantee it. As long as you stay the course, keep on your practices, keep on all of your, um, 
you know, the things that you've been up to, if you've been up to yoga, meditation, sobriety, if you've been doing some healing work, if you've been doing um, whatever, you know, so the, the way this would backfire is that if, if you're some, a Leo out there who has just not even been um, making an effort to change who you're around, I mean, Pluto is in Aquarius, that's your seventh house. You're going to have changes in relationship and how you are, because remember that if Aquarius is where Pluto's at, it's a opposite you, your first house. So it's, it's kind of like who you are in your relationship. So this could be some self reevaluation. Like, who am I really, who do I really want to be to other people? Um, Aquarius loves humanity. And so Leo's love being around other people, but are you around the right people that you can actually trust eighth house is Pisces where Neptune and Saturn are squaring off with Jupiter in Gemini, uh, Mars and Gemini. And so, uh, you know, there's this, this, um, this, this, and Gemini being your 11th house, like it's really just this reevaluation of who are you actually trusting in? Who are you exchanging energies with? Who are you exchanging resources with? And are they fucking worth it? So I freaking love it for Leo, but I think it's going to be struggling. Um, I think it's going to be a difficult, but I, I, I trust and I have faith that every Leo is going to move through this with grace um, and feel so much better on the other side. So that's like that for Leo. Virgo, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Leo season 2024. I am not going to lie. Virgos may not like this one because Virgos don't like change. Virgos like things to be in control. They like it to go their way, but this Leo season is going to spin you upside down. If you're not prepared and flexible, adaptable, all of the things. Um, so Leo is your 12th house. You also may have difficulty sleeping um, or feeling rested. Um, and so it's really going to be a good opportunity to maybe take on some quiet meditation, grounding, getting yourself connected to earth or earth oils or earth tea. Um, also doing some, um, maybe even some slow, uh, calming yoga or Tai Chi or a Qigong or something like that to move your body because Aquarius is your sixth house. And so moving your body to move this energy through that 12th house placement. Um, but you also have the, um, you're part of the, cause Venus will be in Virgo, um, in your first house. So therefore, um, the, uh, um, the, the square between Pisces, your seventh house, uh, and Gemini, which would be your 10th house. So your career, your relationships. Um, and if you happen to have placements in Sagittarius, you could even, you could have a fixed grant or a mutable cross grand cross here, meaning lots of change. Um, and so I feel like Virgos could lose their shit. But I also think that if feel that if Virgos are doing the work and working with, you know, themselves and taking on their practices to calm their body, calm their nervous system, know that even though things are rapidly changing, that they're going to be okay. Um, Y'all got the, let me make sure I get my cards right here. Um, the five of swords in reverse. So this is, you know, you could be easily taken out of the game. You could easily be defeated, but you don't have to be adult. It would all be by choice um, if you do. So if you are a Virgo rising, definitely this is probably a good time to seek out support in whatever capacity that is for you. Um, because you also got Lord taking charge with authority. You're the one that can choose how this goes for you. If you stay in your Virgo ways and need to be in control, need to be, um, everything has to go according to plan. Um, I always think of Monica Geller when I think of Virgos, like the, 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 the cap must go on, make sure you hear the click of the cap going on the marker. I think of Monica. Um, if you've never watched Friends, go watch Friends if you're Virgo rising. Um, or maybe not. Maybe Monica will just piss you off. I don't know. <laughs> um, 
but this is kind of like let it go monica let it go it's just a crayola marker if it dries out crayola markers are fairly inexpensive so if they dry out it's okay um, you can always replace them. Um, but I think that's what this is. Like this is letting it go, knowing that everything is going to be okay. But the, the more you, more you cling on to it, having to go your Virgo way, the more you are going to stress yourself out, which could amplify that Leo in your 12th house energy. Um, but if you let go and release and relax and, you know, again, use some oils that might be supportive, use some yoga, some Tai Chi, some, some Qigong to really move that energy through with that Leo, a lot of that Leo energy. Um, and then you've got that square to Gemini uh, in your 10th house could be, you know, shifting and changing and amplifying your career situation. And then you've got Pisces stuff going on with your relationships and who you trust and how you are in relationships, um, you know, really could be stirring things up here for Virgo. So I really feel like this could be Virgo could be the, the most affected because their insistence on it going their way the more virgo can let go relax release adapt be flexible let it let it be really it's going to be okay but it is going to be a lot of change for virgos that's what i got for virgo all right libra this is your more cast for the Leo season 2024. This is for Libra, Sun, and Rising. Libra, this um, Leo is your 11th house. Aquarius is your fifth house. Um, the square between Pisces, Gemini is happening between your sixth house and your ninth house. Um, you know, the sixth house is about routines and it's also a lot of release, right? So it's releasing old habits, um, releasing old behaviors. Um, and in this case with Saturn and Neptune present, there could be like this release of, um, of, 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 um, um, being more responsible, like letting go of like the idea that you can't do it all or letting go of the idea that, um, and by that, I mean, like empowering yourself that you can indeed have the solid routine or the solid health habits that you need. Um, but I think with this 11th house, fifth house situation, uh, and plus you still have the South node moving through your sign. So you could still strongly be affecting by that. And the, the old, the old patterns, the old habits, the old relationships, to things that is indeed moving and going away. Um, and then that leads into your 11th house, which is groups, communities, and uh, technology. And maybe this is about your relationship with technology and letting go of the idea that you can't do it and embracing that you can if you just practice or if you just take your time or um, whatever. Um, and then the fifth house of uh, being Aquarius, um, the full moon will be there. Uh, so, you know, it, there could be some embracing of your heart's desire or changing your heart's, you know, maybe you're, you're finally listening to your heart and therefore your whole environment, your groups, your, your, like I said, embracing technology changes. Um, I definitely feel like you're experiencing some level of letting go of old, but you're holding on um, because, you know, you want to make sure everybody's happy you or something to that effect. Um, and you get the five of cups upright, which is about holding on to something, even though it's it's gone, um, lingering onto something, even though it's time to let it go. Um, so there's there's certainly a sense of stubbornness going on with Libras right now. Um, a sense of 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 things are ready to change, but you're not ready. You're not ready to embrace how life can be different or that you want new people or whatever. And then you got the, um, oh shit. I forgot what this is. Hold on a second. My bad. Hang on. Sorry. Totally interrupting my train of thought. Uh, autumn, which is letting things go and resting letting old habits go maybe it's belief systems maybe it's um how you feel about something you're having to this could really be like a a, a, a 
mm, a whole paradigm shift for Libras. Like they're they're letting go, but that you know something's leaving them. Their belief about something, their uh, their how they am. I don't know. Something's coming up about like spiritual stuff and habits and uh, like this could be super deep for Libras and that South node moving through your first house. You're just kind of holding on to something that's ready to go. You're holding on to being stubborn about something, whether it's because you think it makes um, others around you happy. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's your context around like being the people pleaser. So you're standing your ground on something that is um, your, how you think other people feel about you, but they don't really feel that way. And they really don't care. They just really want you to be yourself. And Libras have a hard time with that because they're such a people pleaser. Um, but you're really like, I actually believe this. And it's time for me to be that authentic version of me without all of the, the, um, filters without the disguises, without the, the whatever's I'm thinking of like, uh, um, filters on social media. Um, but maybe this is legit. Like you're letting go of something you're dropping off the leaves that have died. The, um, you know, things are calm, things are letting go. Um, so I feel like this could be really uh, hard for some Libras that things are moving in a direction and you're not ready to let go of the old. But trust me when I tell you, the more you can let go of how things have gone thus far and embrace that things can go a different way. If you just be authentic and be yourself without all of the the makeup or the, the hair dye or the, the potential like beauty things that you feel like you've had to do. Like people are going to embrace you more by being yourself than if you're trying to please everyone. We cannot please everyone. <laughs> um, so uh, that's what I have for Libra. I, that was, I don't feel like I made any sense of that, but I think the idea is that with, um, with Aquarius being your fifth house, um, Aquarius is about making things go differently um, and uh, you know, innovative and change and the greater good. And I feel like for Libra, there's something here about following your heart, which may be in a completely different direction than you have been going thus far. And it will change your routines and it will change your health habits and it will change everything. And that's a good thing um, to really dive into. Uh, so yeah, maybe you've had the illusion, Neptune and 29 Pisces, maybe you've had the illusion that you've been doing, a, doing good on this trajectory, but you're sudden, you're realizing that I ain't fucking working and I got to go do it a different way. So what's I have for Libra? All right, Scorpio, this is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Leo is your 10th house and Aquarius is your fourth house. Um, and then we have that square between Pisces and Gemini happening in your fifth and your eighth house. And um, I, Scorpio, I feel like you're trying to find the balance between your emotional intelligence, managing your emotions, your home, um, and managing your thriving career or uh, on the verge of thriving career, or maybe you're trying to get some career advancement. However, what I also feel is that because you've had a lot of work happening in your seventh house um, with Uranus there and every other thing that's moved through there, uh, you, now you're starting to feel into more intimate relationships, whether that's romantic or partner, you know, work business partnerships um, or whatnot. And so, um, it, you know, it's, 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 it's a cool place to be, but it also could feel like you are kind of on the struggle bus of balancing home and work and yourself and your relationships, being a good friend, uh, or whatever. And also that creativity, that heart's desire, um, fifth house Pisces, um, with that eighth house, uh, of, 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 um, mergings and finances and, you know, maybe even like inviting people in, if you're an entrepreneur, um, inviting people in and finding a way to, to, to have that intimate relationship with people to support your business. Or even it's, um, you know, if you've, you've recently got a promotion and you're working with a whole new team, 
Um, it could be about um, allowing or delegating um, responsibilities, being that good leader um, and whatnot. And so you got the high priestess in reverse. So you've still got some uncertainty around that. It could be, um, you know, really being diligent about and critically thinking about who you're partnering with, who you are, um, you know, creating with, who you are um embracing to help you uh, manage your time, manage your emotions, manage your home life, and managing your business, managing your career moves, um, or your public appearance, like how you show, you know, how you want to be seen in public, Leo in the 10th house. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's some insecurity there, you don't feel quite confident um, about who you are in your work yet and who other people, other people's roles in your work. Um, you got the stag as well. And I feel like this is, um, you know, trusting and releasing, trusting, uh, trusting and thriving, sorry, uh, you know, trusting, trusting that the right people are coming to you because you've kind of become more of an authentic version of yourself. Um, and so you're able to show up with the, 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 um, is it amplitude, um, of, you know, you're, you're showing up with a new version. You you're showing up as a new and improved version. So you're able to trust and thrive. And so as you trust in intimate partnerships with business, with, with, with relationships, maybe this is a new romantic partner. Um, we could all hope, right. Okay. Single girl problems. Um, but it's, it's trusting and thriving, whether you do or don't have the right people, but allowing yourself to trust other people to thrive, but also knowing and having boundaries with the wrong person, um, you know, with when the wrong person presents themselves that you have that all that seventh house work, all that first house work from the nodes from Uranus being in your seventh house, you, you've done a lot of that work so that you now know not to let everybody into that eighth house. Scorpios can be really private in that fourth house. Aquarius, again, very private. And so it's knowing who to trust into that eighth house. Um, you know, who, 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 who do you need to be in that intimate space that can really get to know you and know how you function to work with them. So Scorpio, this is a time to really be open, but knowing your boundaries, knowing where to draw the line, where to say, nope, that's not, that's not what I want. Um, I can tell you right now, I've been on dating apps before. I don't do them anymore because I think they're complete or bullshit. But when I've been on dating apps or I even have like a, you know, Facebook connection message me and tell me that they're interested in me, I know in like two lines, nope, 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 nope. I can tell you so immediately and I just drop it. I tell them this will never work. You're not what I want. I can tell just by two lines. I know what I know. Same with business partners. I can tell pretty immediately that somebody is not going to work out in a business situation. And I can also say that as somebody with Pisces in my sixth, fifth house with Mercury there, I know immediately when somebody's the right, the right partner. And that has taken a fuck ton of practice and, and boundaries and knowing that it's okay to say no to the things, to the people in the um, partnerships that will not work. So anyway, that's like a for Scorpio, a little personal, but that's okay. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right, Sagittarius, this is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, for Sag, Sun, and Rising. Um, Leo is your ninth house, Aquarius is your third house, but you've also got the square going on between your fourth house and your seventh house. Um, so there's definitely some growth, some expansion. Um, you know, Leo helps you shine and, you know, Sagittarians definitely shine. Um, but it, there's definitely something about communication and emotional work, um, you know, spiritual lessons to be had here with that Pisces fourth house squaring your seventh house. It's, it's, it's the, um, the spiritual aspect of your relationships for, you know, your like, I mean, fourth house Pisces, it's all about like home emotional intelligence. It's who's matching you emotionally, who's matching you 
um, who is able to be with you on a spiritual level or intellectual level. Um, and are, but are you communicating that? Are you willing to say that you need that in a relationship? Are you willing to, you know, really confront who you're in relationship with or who you want to be in a relationship with um, to sort of verify or let them know or, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but I definitely feel like some things could be shifting in your relationships, um, particularly your, your partnerships, um, just based on the seventh house, fourth house square, um, that also could be T squaring any of your Sagittarius placements. If you have, um, placements, uh, in at around 17, 18 degrees of Sag or even 16 degrees of Sag, um, but also with that ninth house, third house, um, it's really communicating that you want a more belief uh, centered or a more belief aligned relationship with your partner, with your friends, with your colleagues, um, something to that effect. Um, you got the four of pentacles upright, and this is exactly it. You're seeing that it's possible to freaking have the relationship that you want. You're seeing that it's possible. Are you willing to verbalize and communicate that you actually want that? Are you willing to go the distance, ninth house, um, for that? I could see some Sagittarians making some huge moves based on the fact that they have decided to go with a different partner. Um, could this be the breakup sign for Leo season? I don't know. Um, I would be, I would caution you though, if this is a breakup time for you, um, if it hasn't already been in the works, Mercury retrograde in Leo in your ninth house is probably not the time to, um, be ending relationships because it, it may just, it may, it won't go as smoothly as you would like it to probably. Um, so, you know, if this is a breakup for you, um, you know, be sure that it's something that's like maybe not finalized until mercury is direct and out of shadow which won't be well into september won't, it won't be until well into september um just because you know if you if you abruptly end something in a relationship during a mercury retrograde you know even like the next mercury retrograde which will be in sagittarius by the way um later this year that relationship could come right back up and haunt you and wreak havoc and whatever, create some drama, that sort of thing. Um, and then you got the, oh, I keep forgetting. Um, I try to look at these ahead of time so that I don't have to look at them on camera. It saves a little bit of time, but today it's not happening. So um, you got the great teacher, which is um, learn from spiritual experiences. I, this is, I mean, you could take this a couple different ways. Like, you know, maybe you're with a partner who's just not getting where you are intellectually, or if you think of a spiritual experience, like a sexual experience, maybe they're not serving you in that way. Um, and so I definitely feel like, hold on, can we get it to where it's not glaring? Maybe. Okay. Sorry. I need to work on my lighting. Um, I feel like I mean, really, that's what this feels like is as Jupiter is making his way through Gemini in your seventh house, um, you're really reevaluating your. That was cute. I had the card backwards. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I am really bad in a thousand today. Um, you're really reevaluating your partnerships. You're really reevaluating it are your relationships serving you how you need to be served and you can take that however the fuck you want to <laughs> um but also with that for that pisces in your fourth house you're really thinking is are these relationships and then pluto's in your third house which is where this full moon's going to be on the 19th um i don't know i really see sagittarius uh breaking away um really breaking away because they're fucking done. They are sick and tired of having to, um, lower themselves or, uh, be less than the Sagittarians. Y'all are ruled by Jupiter. That's a lot of, of expansion growth. And maybe your partner is just not doing it or your coworkers are just not, I highly doubt this is about coworkers, um, because there's really no 10th house involvement. 
Um, but that doesn't mean anything because Venus is in Virgo for that T square. So yeah, it could be work related, but I really feel like it's more about fourth house, emotional intelligence, home life, nurturing, maternal things, um, and seventh house, uh, and you just saying what you need to say, like this ain't fucking working. I need to get out. Or maybe you just need a break. Maybe you just need a vacation from your partner. You need a vacation without your partner, <laughs> um, something like that. So I don't know, Sag, just feel into this one. Be careful because of Mercury retrograde um, in that ninth house. Um, you know, this may even be like a cautionary on traveling. Uh, maybe you need to uh, stay at home and confront the situation rather than taking the ninth house uh, cop out route and traveling and getting away from it. Maybe it's time to stay home and actually face the music and face the situation. So it could go a bunch of different ways. I'm just saying caution, just cautioning you on the fact that Mercury is retrograde through most of August. And even though decisions may be made the next time mercury goes retrograde will be in sagittarius so you kind of want to be careful how you if things weren't already in the works this is definitely a time to be careful of your choices maybe even be careful of spouting off at the mouth sort of thing so that's what i got for sages all right, Capricorn, sun and rising. This is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, Leo is your eighth house. Aquarius is your second house. This is self-worth and intimate relationships, money, partnerships. Um, and then of course, Pisces being your third house and, and Gemini is your sixth house. Um, you're really thinking through your routines, your health habits, um, your communication, how you communicate spiritually. Um but also like your relationships and similar to Sagittarius, I guess, in that um, your intimate partners, money, part, you know, money partners. So this could be business partnerships with the eighth house. Um, this could be your self-worth and how you value money or how you value your material possessions. Um, that full moon in Aquarius is going to nail your six, second house. Um, but that that square is also going to, but also you could be being T squared by any of, uh, by the nodes continuing to move through Aries Libra. Um, and so just really reflecting and re-evaluating, um, you know, who you're in partnership with and who you're not and, uh, who you are sharing finances with, um, and whatnot and your your own self-worth around that. Do the people that you're with like honor you, um, do they support you financially even? Maybe this is reevaluating. Um, and you know what? Two of cups in reverse. Maybe this is like you you're losing um something. You're you're uh losing a partnership, losing a and this is not necessarily an int uh, a romantic intimate partner, but a financial partner um could be uh you know cutting ties. Um and I also think this is about communication. Like maybe you've wised up and realized that somebody is not <clears throat> the business partner that you thought they were, or you need to reevaluate your business and how you handle it. Um, you got the mirror guard, the mirror guard. It's time to reflect. And I definitely feel this with the uh, second house and third house um, Aquarius Pisces situation. Um, you had you you definitely maybe jumped the gun on some um, investments, maybe jumped the gun on how you are using money and it's time to sit back and be like, oh shit, did I really fuck up here or am I going the right direction here? Um, you know, if you are dealing with nodes squaring you, um, you know, that can be, uh, you know, 10th house, fourth house. So that, that could really be, uh, um, you know, losing a job, um, and realizing that something's more important than the money, something's more important than, or than the way you've been investing in money, um, and how you've been going about money and money matters. So definitely communicate, definitely look at those routines, look at those health habits, um, you know, are, are you truly in alignment with what you've learned from Pluto? Cause Pluto is coming back at you just one more time, um, to, to check in on you one more time, Capricorn. So, uh, yeah, this, this, yeah, that's what I got for Capricorn.
All right, Aquarius, Aquarius rising. This is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, of course, Leo is your seventh house. Um, Aquarius is your first house. And the um the um the mutable square will be your second house, fifth house, um, and then any other placements that you have in any of those signs. So um it's it's I feel like Aquarius is ready to they're ready to go but Aquarius kind of takes a lot to get going um and then it, you know this being a Leo season it's like having the courage to be an Aquarius but there's a Mercury retrograde um and Uranus situation so you could have some stuff you got to move through with partnerships you you could have some creative um like um like knowing that you are worthy of having the creative partnerships that you want, um, knowing that you are worthy to have your heart's desire met, um, really diving into, I, I feel like it's more, it's, it's while it's like igniting and going to light you up, um, it's also going to be like, uh, it's, it's not quite time yet if that makes sense. Like there's always that divine timing. Um, and I say that because you got the, um, ace of wands in reverse. So this is the ace of fire in reverse. Um, it's, it's, it's the newness ain't ready yet. And so it's kind of like the, you're ready to go, but you don't have quite all the pieces in place yet. So kind of hold the, hold the line slightly. Um, because I mean, Taurus is your, fourth house is that right Aquarius first yes Taurus would be your fourth house so Uranus is still kind of wreaking havoc on your home situation um and changing things up there uh and I think as we move through this this um Leo season I feel like with Mercury going retrograde in your seventh house like there's going to be some changes in relationships um and how your partnerships friendships um move forward and maybe there's going to be some people um who 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 uh, uh renegotiate or people who check out or you know they don't want to be a part of it anymore um in whatever capacity that might be um and then you got the fire guardian, which is igniting your passions. I think Aquarians are still struggling with the fact that their passion is important right now. I think they're struggling with their uniqueness being important. And I feel like that as we move through specifically this Mercury retrograde and all the tech shit we're having going on, I think Aquarians are going to be lit the fuck up because like, hey, they actually fucking need us now. Now, what do we get now? You know, y'all thought we were weird. Y'all thought we were nerdy. Now you fucking need us. Well, you kind of have to like clear some of that first. You kind of got to let us know that we're worthy, that, that you feel like we are like knowing our worth or honoring our worth, respecting our worth. Like, I don't think Aquarians should just step up and rescue the humanity from technical glitches. I think Aquarians ought to like put up a fight a little bit, not in a negative way, but just in a like, make sure that this is honoring of your self-worth. Make sure this isn't just about like, um, cause remember Aquarius is about humanity and the greater good of humanity. So like if a corrupt motherfucker comes at you and wants you to help them like bail out of the bail us out of the te technical glitches just so they can like continue with their corrupt plan. Like I don't I feel like Aquarians are going to be like, hell no, 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 that's not how this works. That's not how this works. No, no, you're going to honor us. You're going to respect the fact that, yep, I can help you out. But um, what's in it for me? How are you going to honor me and thank me and give me gratitude for all the shit I've done for you. So <laughs> I feel like that's how Aquarians can kind of ignite the fire. Remember air fuels fire, air, fire can't exist without oxygen. So um, I feel like that's where a lot of Aquarians are is like, they want to be respected. They want to be honored. They want to be valued for their abilities and their creative um, potential to, you know, 
I, I, it, it's kind of like, you know, if you've ever worked in tech, you know that when once people know that you're a tech nerd, they they expect you to save them from their dumbassness of of not knowing how to use a computer or whatever. Um, and so they just kind of like call on you 24 seven with no regard or respect for the fact that you need to sleep and eat and, you know, go play um, and all of those things. So I feel like Aquarians, it's like knowing your worth, knowing that you are worthy of being honored, being respected, having integrity to time, um, all of those things. So uh, that's what I have for Aquarius. All right, Pisces, this is your forecast for Leo season 2024. Um, Leo is your sixth house and Aquarius is your 12th house. Um, and then of course you've got this square going on and of course Saturn and Neptune camped out in your first house. So there's a lot of restriction going on for some Pisces because now it's Saturn retrograde um, in Pisces and uh, squaring um, your fourth house where Jupiter and Mars will be. Um, there's just a lot of restriction. And of course you got the hanged man upright. So a lot of this could even be self-induced restriction. Um, but you're certainly being kind of held back from proceeding forward, probably more so than anybody right now. And it's kind of just like, you know, being reflective, um, you know, Aquarius is your 12th house. So it's like, you, you know, having that like subconscious or, um, some like visionary um maybe even like leadership uh but it's kind of being held back you're in preparation for the next um and you also got the trader which is the energetic exchange um and so you could be like energy, ener like having a bartering experience, like, you know, learning that you can trade uh, your gifts for, you know, somebody helping you out, or it could be that you are, um, you know, service for service, something like that. I feel like this hanged man though, is really what this is because you've got Saturn and Neptune retrograde in your first house. So you're like, oh, you're feeling stuck in the mud stuck in the molasses in january um because of these retrogrades and the now, now the squares to jupiter and it may feel amplified like something may um you know com completely halt your progress uh with the jupiter um or it could catapult it one of the two um and that Leo sixth house, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's daily routines and, and, and having the courage to, to, uh, have the, have your routines be like almost to a chiseled, like refined to like, re like super refined, like detail refined, if that makes sense. Um, and then, um, that full moon in Aquarius and of course, Pluto moving through Aquarius too, in your 12th house, it's like, you know, you're just kind of having this like spiritual um, or subconscious uh, uh, re, I want to say like reprogramming or self-conscious like renegotiation, like reprogramming or deconditioning. So you may be purging off some shit, getting you ready for um, the next level up of, you know, when, once the planets go direct and, and once they leave and move into your second house, um, which will start next year. Like, so there's this push pull situation where you're feeling like really pulled back. Um, but it also is preparing you for the next level. Um, and so there could be a lot of, and then of course we have that mercury retrograde, um, situation. So you're dealing probably with the most of the retrograde energy. So don't be surprised Pisces if, you know, things come to a screeching halt for you and you really have to stop and, and just sit there and be like, <laughs> okay, now what <laughs> type of thing. So, uh, don't be, don't be surprised if that happens. I'm not saying it will, but I'm saying like, you know, take precautions if you're traveling, um, or if you're trying to catapult projects forward, that things may not go as, as swimmingly forward as you would like in this moment. So that's what I got for Pisces. And that's what I have for your, uh, sun and rising signs for this Leo season. This was a lot. I, I'm, I, I haven't seen a timestamp on this video, but I'm sure it's long, um, 
and it did take me the better part of the day. I don't know what's up with my brain in Gemini season or in Gemini season with Jupiter and Gemini, but holy crap. Um, I've been more flaky than usual and having to take more notes than usual um, and really like slow down and not do as much as I normally like can like energetically. So it's taking me longer to do these videos, which I'm not mad at. It's just, I'm just observing that I can't just pound them out like I normally do. And, and uh, I have to pause and, and restart and things like that, which is not a problem. It's just that it's just the way it is right now. Anywho, so take very good care of yourselves. Again, stay tuned for the Moon Astrology Tarot videos um, and whatnot. Feel free to join the Awakening Spirit Collective where there is a lot going on around there that can be very supportive um, for you as we all move through this timeline jumping and all of the things that are happening and unfolding. Um, so much happening at once. Um, and so I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please hit the like button. Please drop me a comment. Let me know what you're experiencing during this Leo season. You can bookmark this video. I'll have the link in all of my regular videos so you can come back and look at it throughout Leo season um, to just check in with your sun sign or your rising sign so you can be like, oh shit, she did say that, didn't she? <laughs> um, all of those things. So anyway, thank you so much. And I'll talk to you on the next video. Bye for now.